In this video, I'm going to bring you through the exact same scaling eight figure e-commerce strategy that we use for our seven and eight figure clients. And this strategy is responsible for generating million dollar months. Okay. If you, I'm actually going to show you a quick case study right now. I also have a bunch of past case studies that you can go and explore in my other YouTube videos. But you know, long story short, if you don't have a systematized way to actually generate creatives and come up with winning creative strategies and angles, you pretty much don't have a chance to scale to seven figure months, seven figures alone. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what type of research we do, what type of strategies we leverage to come up with new creative concepts, and how we scale our creative side of the business. Okay, stay tuned until the end, I'll be covering many important topics, I'm going to show you different things as well, moving from one sheet to another. So stick until the end. And with no further ado, let's get right into the video. Right. So as usual, let me just show you this very quick case study about spoken about this client before. This is just one of our eight figure clients that we're currently managing, working with and partnering with. And so as you can see, they generated in the last 90 days, 3.1, uh, almost $3.2 million, which averages around over $1 million per month. In fact, if we take a look at the last 30 days, just for you know, for your own reference, if it loads, we're scaling uh, uh, previous period. Let's just take a look here. We're scaling by like I would say 15, 20, 25% month over month. And of course now it's Q4. And so we're probably going to end up getting probably close. I hope close to $3 million in the month of November, because we're just really going to aggressively scale. Um, and so this is a really exciting client. And I, I look forward to sharing and documenting what things are working um, with, with this client right now. Um, but most importantly, I want you to understand one thing that to get to these numbers, uh, first of all, you need maybe a couple of channels, right? Sure. You can maybe get, away with it with like maybe just Facebook ads. But you know, this this client is actually has multiple channels, just like affiliate partners, organic traffic, uh, Facebook, TikTok. now we're getting into Pinterest, like, we're actually just really growing um, with an omnipresence, um, kind of like strategy in mind. But before getting into that, even like before speaking about omnipresence, which is should be your next step to scaling to like eight figures, is that you need to understand that scaling from like, you know, $10,000 uh, a month to 50, 100, $150,000 a month in spend on like social platforms requires a lot of creative input. So if I always talk about this in my other videos, if you don't have a systematized way to scale your creatives, you basically don't have a predictable way of increasing your ad spend, meaning that if you maintain your creative level here, and you don't have a way to like increase this while you increase your ad spend, your cost per acquisition just, are just going to go up through the roof and, and you're going to end up essentially scaling your budget, decreasing, uh, increasing cost per acquisition, decreasing ROAS, and then essentially not being profitable on the front end anymore, which in many cases you want to be right now, what I want to show you in this video is actually, uh, and I have some weird lighting in my face, but it'll, I'm good. Uh, but what I want to do in this video is actually bring you through a sheet that is super fundamental and crucial when it comes to coming up with creative concepts to scale, right? Because once again, um, it is true that you need perhaps, you know, team members to grow your creative side, but you also need creative strategists and that lead the editors and the graphic designers to make sure that we make and invest our time into concepts that first of all work, that have an opportunity and that have been studied. Okay, we don't we don't come up with concepts out of the blue, just like that, right randomly every single day. So this is the ex listen to me very closely. I really genuinely hope that you watch this video until the end, because I'm going to cover multiple things here. I have like a lot of things to cover as you can as you can see here. But please stick until the end, because I can promise you there's a lot of things that I want to cover in this video that are really, really important. So first of all, whenever we, we decide to like onboard a client, and this were if it were my brand or another person's brand, the client, whatever, it doesn't actually matter, you should do this yourself. Um, you know, every single time you you decide to grow a company, okay, what's really, really important is uh, the idea that you need to uh, have a systematized way to study the market, do a lot of competitor research, do research on how your customers are talking about your product and your competitors product, so that you can come up with unique angles. And what you see over here, this is a creative concept sheet. And whenever we onboard client, essentially, what we do is that we fill this up, this is just a demo, but typically, we have like, we fill this up with like, 20 to 30 angles. And so what we do is that we fill it up with 20 to 30 angles, then we fill it up with like 30 40 different creative concepts, which is how we want to scale our winning angles, right. 
And we also have inspiration links, and I'm gonna show you some examples of what I mean by inspo links, so that we can always cross-reference what a POV actually is, or what it, us versus them actually is, or what an unboxing video looks like. Google search, text overlay, image grid, reaction, reviews, boomerang, X reason, all that stuff, it's all documented in it with an inspo link, so that you always have an understanding of what um, it actually looks like uh, to recreate that video. And then at the same time, and I'm gonna show you this super cool sheet that I found, uh, and that my, my uh, team members found is that we fill it up with hooks so that once we find the winning angle we can test it with different creative concepts and then we can further scale with different hooks and the hook is typically the first three to five maximum i would say seven seconds but typically three to five seconds is your hook and so if you you can basically keep the same angle same creative concept if you're doing like a pov and then you can scale with like five different hooks. So by just having one angle, one creative concept, which is typically one ad, you can basically scale horizontally with like, you know, winning uh, uh, hook number one, two, three, four, five. So this is like actually a great way. This should be the last step because you don't wanna like, you can uh, hypothetically, like you can also like test a bunch of hooks in the first place, but I prefer doing that at the end, uh, like once you like really crack the code with like a creative concept and or most importantly, a, a marketing message or marketing angle. So why why is it important? New York City, all the sounds. Why is it important to uh, come up with a mega ultra cool list as soon as you get going with this? Because the, the last thing that you wanna do, and listen to me closely here, this is super important, is that you wake up one day and you don't have an agenda. Or let's just say you have you set the agenda for the week and then the next week is like, okay, now what do I do? And what typically ends up happening is that you maybe just go scroll through your competitors and you see that something works and you just say, okay, and you just say internally in your mind, okay, let me just give this to the team and see if it works for us, which is completely fine. But everything needs to be documented up front. So typically whenever we create a plan and onboard a client, we actually plan for the next three months. And so we have three months worth worth of ideas. So that's all we do. We don't spend time going back into the strategy and research process and then go back into finding uh, the videos and then going back into actually creating the videos. It's all like do it once, forget it, not really forget it, but keep it in a side of your mind, plan for the next three months and then go all in and actually taking action and pre reproducing the concepts that you, you studied, right? So this is first, first thing. Now, how do we actually scale? Uh, marketing angles, we scale them with uh, creative concept. But before we even get there, how do we actually come up with new angles and how do we come up with all these super profitable angles? We do something called customer mining, which is essentially a process where we go and analyze all of our reviews. And if we don't have enough reviews, we study and go in, uh, on, on like Amazon, for example. And I'm gonna show you like a, a quick tool that we use that is super, super helpful if it loads. And essentially what we do is that we use, we leverage tools in AI. And I spoke about this in my last video, but I'm, so I'm not going to talk about it too long, but stick with me for 30 seconds and I'm going to move on. Uh, but essentially what this tool does for the new viewers is that it allows you to understand how people react to your product in reviews, what are the pros or the cons. So like positive features and benefits that your customer said and how to transform that into an ad concept or angle. Or for example here, uh, use cases. So how do people normally use your product? So the, it's bedtime, meditation session, creative activities, children's bedtime, home office break, and then we come up with angles, right? Same thing, basically the tool allows us also to do is come up with like customer uh, sentiments. So what's good and what, what needs to be improved. And so everybody here, for example, says that uh, we need to improve uh, lifetime battery. So 100% there. And then what's good, most people like for calming and relaxing, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So stick with me because I'm gonna show you how I, how I generate this uh, quite quickly. But I don't wanna deviate too much out of the topic of this video, which is how to scale creatives and, but stick with me because all of this process that I'm talking about, the research, the angles and the messaging is all purely because I want to sh uh, present to you a, a much easier solution to actually scale. Because if you don't do all of this legwork before, scaling your creative concepts and scaling your, your UGC videos or your images, basically the title of this video is gonna be impossible. It's gonna be really, really stressful. So if you don't do this customer mining and all this research before. So I'm just sharing that with you so that you don't reach out three months later and you're like, this is impossible, Brando. Teach me how to do the rest, right? So this is how it works. And to get all of these data and all of these uh, percentages and keywords and topics, I basically use a tool called, uh, what is it called? It's called Shulex. And what you can do is that you can go basically on Amazon. This is just a, uh, let's just say a competitor that has a lot of reviews, 600, 700 reviews. So instead of reading through these reviews, you can basically click on review analysis over here. And of course, if you get the full insights, it's gonna give you a lot more uh, data, which I recommend. And then uh, regenerate, and then it basically allows you to have the who, when, when, where, 
cons the cons are size battery life pressure uh, the usage scenario customer experience and this is basically a lot of great information that you should leverage to come up with new angles first of all come up with this customer review insights doc which is fundamental which then you should use to come up with new angles and and ideas okay now how do we scale we scale with creative concepts and we basically have a very systematized way of tracking all of these concepts and so if we forgot forget what a P, we don't we never forget what the pov or, uh, is or what creative concepts are but this is mostly for our clients and just to have like a documentation process we basically have links or we just open them let me just open a few like the uh, X reasons why we do like a reaction or another good one is perhaps uh, we can do announcements, statics or trending TikTok. Let's just see podcast. This is a good one. Podcasts are working really well. And so whenever we open them up, we essentially have a video that we can look at for, oh God, you know, so nice. this, this is the reaction video, right? Let's just take a look at this one. This is a POV, right? So we yeah, have inspo links. It's so easy to get hooked on scrolling. It's like this kind of And this is basically the um, the podcast right one. So what we do here is basically always make sure that we document this process so it's way easier to actually get inspiration and and find uh, you know winning concepts uh, from like creative inspirations. And so what I recommend you to do is that you fill this up and then you put inspo links based on your niche. And how do I find these, you know, creative inspiration, uh, creative concepts from like similar competitors. Well, use tools like Autra, for example. This is a great tool that we use where let's just say that we're working with a jewelry company and we need to do like jewelry uh, competitor re uh, competitor research. We then go in here and study brands that are running that are running like two, three, four thousand ads that are absolutely killing it. And then we filter by video, nah, like format, I would say. So images and status to make sure that we're only filtering active ads. Then we can filter by longest running ads to make sure that we study the ads that are the most profitable ones because the, the longest running ads are always going to be the most profitable ads, right? I don't need to explain that to you. And then this is how we come up with the creative inspiration. So we basically look at the videos and then we categorize it. Uh, we can just copy paste the link and then categorize it over here so that we have an inspiration for a POV, a before and after, etc. right? And then, of course, you want to model um, as many of, of, of what your best direct competitor is doing. And, and put them at the top of the list. And then of course, feel free to also um, complete other other uh, creative concepts so that you can maybe test other things with the same angle that works or that is proven, but other creative concepts within, let's just say double chin. This is, I'll explain also how we scale. So how we scale is very strategic. So we spend 80% of our time on angles that already are proven to work and can scale. And so in this example, if we go after the double chin angle, meaning we're selling a product to reduce double chin, then we would choose this angle and then we would do POV, us versus them, ASMR, AI. So I'm basically go through this entire list. And at the same time, and this brings me to my next point, this is where we leverage our, our 600 hooks resource, which my team scraped uh, somewhere, I don't remember where. We got them from these guys. But essentially, what this is, is like a framework to come up with unlimited hooks. And I absolutely love this. My clients go crazy for this because you can basically come up with like a hooks in different niches, but by understanding the framework. And so I'll give you an example here. Like if you ever plan to competitive dance, right? This is like an example. You better bring your A game because it's an easy, uh, uh, it isn't easy. So listen up. And so this is like an idea. Three, uh, sorry, this is the framework. This was the example. And this is the framework. Three, easy. And then you, you fill in the gaps, date nights, outfits, ideas. Or another one here is like three elements I wish I knew to include in my health or whatever journey. And so here's like number elements I wish I knew to include in my niche journey. So sorry, I meant to say this on the right is the framework and this is the example, right? So you can pretty much navigate through all of these scenarios. Uh, this is generated by Chai GPT, but it's really, really high quality uh, hooks. And so what we do is that we leverage this sheet to come up with really, really cool hooks that are, you know, maybe nobody else is using. Um, and it helps us with inspiration. So all of these sheets, by the way, you can, you can join my community everything is documented over there and everything is shared over there. They're just resources that are uh, for my community. If you're interested, you can go check it out. Now, uh, once again, uh, just to go back over here, once again, this is the, the angle. Cool. Now we, we scale also with creative concepts and then we further scale with different hooks. So just imagine having one angle and uh, instead of just doing one angle, one creative concept, one hook, just imagine doing this, this times 10 or whatever times 10, just imagine how much you can squeeze the ju the juice from angles and, and messaging and, and stuff like that. So this is really, really important information. And once again, this is like a, rep uh, a chart where I just kind of show you how it works. 
uh, in like another visual representation. You have like three marketing angles that you test. Number two is a winner, good. Double and triple down, 10x, 20x, 50x, 100x with creative concepts and basically come up with like uh, different creative concepts uh, where you can just like boom, 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 boom. Uh, duplicate them, test as much as possible, and squeeze the juice from the marketing angle. So I just wanted to show you this very quickly. Now, hopefully you got some value from this. This is what I, what I wanted to talk about. The next thing that is really crucial when scaling and testing your creative concepts, okay, is making sure that you have a way to systematize track. And I always speak about these videos uh, or these creative tracking sheets in my other videos, so hopefully I'm not boring you to death, but this is how it works. I always say once you find a process that works, it doesn't make sense to change it around. Just stick to it, which is what I'm doing and why I'm maybe repeating myself sometimes in these videos, right? Or maybe I should say most of the times, but essentially uh, each test that we track is basically a creative concept or a marketing angle or both. And we track the ad set in the ads manager. And once it's launched there, we put it over here. And so this is, we track the marketing angle that we launched, the main emotion, the avatar customer that we went through or that we targeted, the hook that we used, the messaging, the copy, the ad copy link, whether it was an image or a video, the creative link. And then we track basically the status by saying, oh, this was a winner, a loser, not loser, break even, whatever. And then we come up with next steps and, and ideas based on the analysis that we just made, right? We don't come up with random things. Once again here, the reason why we do this research, right? And we use tools like this one is because we come up with ideas that are absolutely not random, like what most people do. It can be random, it has to be studied based on data, analytics, you have to be a nerd. I always say you have to be an analytical nerd to understand all this information, gather the information, then come up with new winning concepts that you can scale for your own brand, okay? I really hope that this video was valuable. Uh, um, I did go over a lot of things in terms of like how, how we structure, but this is pretty much how we scale, right? Uh, we scale horizontally with creative concepts and then we scale even more horizontally with different hooks. And this is uh, this is how we structure it. We, we have inspirational, uh, insp insp links, that's how we call them, to make sure that we're always on peace um, or always have a very clear understanding of what creative or creative concept we're, we're dealing with. And once again, the way that we actually scale is that we do the homework up front and plan the next three months ahead so that we don't have to go back and forth doing this. I hope this video was valuable for you. Hopefully you got some nuggets from this. Um, and that's it. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for new videos. Like, subscribe, link the bell, ring the bell, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.